There is an interesting tidbit that prior to Falcon Heavy's maiden launch in 2018, Musk ordered Falcon Heavy cancelled, forcing Gwynny Shotwell, who'd been tipped off by another SpaceX employee, to sprint to a conference room and remind him that the U.S. Air Force, a critical customer, had already purchased a launch. At the time, this was just viewed as a fun story, and people were happy Shotwell was there to save Falcon Heavy since it was awesome. However, with hindsight, maybe Musk was right, given that Falcon Heavy's disadvantages are increasingly evident, and this promoted him to bring his decision back from death. It's over. SpaceX to cancel the Falcon Heavy. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. Since its maiden mission in June 2019, this heavy vehicle has suffered a period of three years staying grounded, and until 2022, this giant woke up to perform only one mission. In 2023, the situation got brighter a little bit as SpaceX reached five Falcon Heavy launches. But in the future, even when the company takes over the lease of SLC-6 for more Falcon rocket launches, the focus will remain on Falcon 9. This fact clearly reflects the low demand for Falcon Heavy. Falcon Heavy is unlike any rocket on the market that is just three Falcon 9 strapped together. It is like a masculine guy with impressive muscle, but most satellite operators don't need a vehicle that can deliver 70 tons, 64 metric tons of payload to low Earth orbit, as the Heavy can. As you know, most satellites sent into space are in the LEO constellation, which is small, weighing between 100 and 1,000 kilograms. SpaceX's Starlink satellite weighs 260 kilograms each. In addition, the amount of satellites per launch is not much, such as SpaceX tends to only launch 22 Starlink satellites. So they go with cheaper medium lift options like the Falcon 9. SpaceX sells Falcon 9 missions for $67 million whereas a standard heavy flight goes for $97 million. The bigger vehicles, really, it's the government that needs those. Phil Smith, a space industry analyst at the Virginia-based consulting firm Bryce Tech. Burley rockets like the Falcon Heavy, Ariana Space's Ariane 5, and United Launch Alliance's Delta IV Heavy primarily launch big, bespoke satellites. Smith explained, such craft tends to be built and operated by government agencies like NASA and the U.S. National Reconnaissance Office, not commercial satellite companies. While these expensive one-offs don't fly nearly as often as telecom satellites, they do need rides on a fairly regular basis. An Ariane 5 launched NASA's $10 billion James Webb Space Telescope on December 25, 2021, for example. The Delta IV Heavy has been launched several times since 2019. Falcon Heavy has also previously participated in small satellite deployment missions sponsored by research facilities. However, that does not mean Falcon Heavy has a significant impact on government agencies like NASA. The key policymakers behind the scenes, there is a rule of thumb that a launch vehicle needs to be flown successfully 10 consecutive times in order to be considered a reliable option for government flights. For SpaceX, this regulation became more flexible as in June 2018, the company was awarded a $130 million contract to launch the mysterious military space plane USS F-52 on SpaceX's heavy vehicle. In 2020, NASA broke the rule to award the company a $117 million contract to loft Psyche spacecraft aboard a Falcon Heavy booster. Even so, that also cannot deny an obvious truth that Falcon 9 is still NASA's priority. The space agency relies heavily on the Falcon 9 and Dragon spacecraft to bring supplies and astronauts to the ISS and completely on the Falcon 9 and Dragon to return all from the ISS, and it would not be hard to explain this reality. The lower costs of the Falcon 9 have enabled large-scale projects such as the finished complete refresh of the Iridium satellite network with eight Falcon 9 launches in total in 2019. From early 2018 to early 2019, while Falcon Heavy was still on the ground, the F-9 Block 5 reusability technology was developed. Block 5 Falcon 9 technology was targeted for 10 flights without a major refurbishment. By early 2019, a single Block 5 Falcon 9 first stage was reused three times and multiple Block 5 first stages were flown twice. The new Block 5 by then has reached 22,800 kilograms to LEO, the same as almost the contemporary strongest rockets from other companies. Launch contracts for Falcon Heavy were moved to Falcon 9 when possible. Falcon 9 took away a lot of its brother's need to exist. 
On top of this, the industry did not believe in Falcon Heavy. Every launch contract signed was for something that could be launched by another company. SpaceX tried to sell Falcon Heavy launches to NASA for Moon and Mars missions, but SLS got in the way. NASA Administrator Charles Bolden said in a 2014 interview, We don't have a commercially available heavy lift vehicle. Falcon 9 Heavy may someday come about. It's on the drawing board right now. SLS is real. It's funny that SLS later became the joke in the aerospace industry as it's well known for the scandals involved in over-budget postponement and the extremely high cost per launch rather than its contribution. If embraced, Falcon Heavy could have rapidly accelerated plans to return to the moon and simultaneously save billions of dollars. At this point, it was mostly too late, and while NASA's new administrator Jim Bridenstine was giving the vehicle much more consideration, Artemis was full steam ahead on SLS. Another factor that pushed Falcon Heavy into Elon Musk's blacklist is Starship. Of course, according to Musk's principle, put all eggs in one basket in the future, Starship will replace even Falcon 9, let alone Falcon Heavy. This intention was hinted at on February 5, 2018, when a day before Falcon Heavy's inaugural launch. What we decided internally is to focus our future development on BFR. It looks like BFR development is moving quickly, and it will not be necessary to qualify Falcon Heavy for crewed spaceflight, SpaceX's CEO declared. The Falcon Heavy was originally intended to be the launch system for the Mars-destined Red Dragon crew capsule, but as SpaceX was working on the unexpected level of complexity that supersizing the already existing Falcon 9 demanded, they realized that their ambitions of Martian colonization would not be served by a tiny crew capsule landing on the Martian surface, and the concept was scrapped. On the other hand, the big Falcon rocket or Starship was promised to be the most powerful and largest vehicle in the world. With a total height of up to 121 meters at least, and a 150-ton payload capacity to LAO Starship, is truly a bright candidate for the large-scale ferrying payload mission. What's more, this gigantic vehicle is fully reusable, contributing to cutting down the cost per launch to under $10 million, a very attractive price for any customer. So, between a vehicle with a significant payload but a fairly high cost and a superload rocket with a very low cost, which do you prefer? If what you care about is margin, then the second choice is on the table and it is also what the national agencies aim for. That brings SpaceX lucrative contracts as well as the free chance to market its reputation. In 2021, NASA awarded fellow billionaire Musk's SpaceX a $3 billion contract to build its Starship spacecraft to land astronauts on the lunar surface for the first time since the final Apollo mission in 1972. One year later, or in 2022, it's the turn of the U.S. Air Force with its $102 million five-year contract as part of what it calls the Rocket Cargo Program. The award is intended to study how SpaceX could transport military cargo on its launch vehicles using cargo containers compatible with other modes of transportation. Even in 2023, the U.S. military goes much further intending to purchase a Starship rocket and build hundreds of Mechazilla launch towers by 2030. It can be said that in the flow of modernization, with the increasing number of unicorns in the rocket field, innovation and acceptance to throw away old things are inevitable, and saying goodbye to the Falcon Heavy will not only save SpaceX resources, but also pave the way for the company's new era, Starship. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.